yet another paper, this one published in a mainstream place. It's still in, in preprint. It's not published. It hasn't even been peer reviewed. But by a reputable mainstream academic, it's called Serious Adverse Events of Special Interest Following MRNA Vaccination in Randomized Trials. Uh, the communicating author is Peter Doshi, uh, who, boy, I think is uh, editor. I've forgotten now. I don't have it in my notes that are on screen right now. Uh, at I want to say the British Medical Journal, although I'm not positive about that. The results in the abstract, which is the summary written by the authors of, of the paper, of the research they have done. Pfizer and Moderna mRNA COVID-19 vaccines were associated with an increased risk of serious adverse events of special interest, with an absolute risk increase of 10.1 and 15.1 per 10,000 vaccinated over placebo baselines of 17.6 and 42.2. Uh, 95% confidence interval, et cetera, et cetera. Combined, the mRNA vaccines were associated with an absolute risk increase of serious adverse events of special interest of 12.5 per 10,000, 95% confidence interval of 2.1 to 22.9. The excess risk of serious adverse events of special interest surpassed the risk reduction for COVID-19 hospitalization relative to, the relative to the placebo group in both Pfizer and Moderna trials. 2.3 and 6.4 per 10,000 participants, respectively. So in plain English, what they found by going and looking at the data in the uh, it, that, that Pfizer and Moderna finally released is that the risks from these vaccines, the risks of serious adverse events, and they describe how those are defined, and they're defined um, pretty carefully and, and very much the same between Pfizer and Moderna, uh, the incidence of serious adverse events is higher than the benefits from the vaccines as measured by reduce, reduce, <laughs> reduced uh, hospitalizations. That is consistent with all sorts of things we're seeing, of course. Uh, this is a paper that is due to be published in a major journal by a lot of you know, a lot of big names who are you know have not been have have not been deplatformed, if not been canceled for saying such things. This is the paper you can see they've put in big gray print across the back, across, you know, preprint, not peer reviewed. Uh, but as we've talked about before, uh, you've, you know, you've A, got what, seven authors on here who are effectively each other's peers who were peer reviewing it, and lots of other people who know what they're doing who have peer reviewed this effectively. Uh, but because most people who aren't scientists here peer review as the, the sine qua non of what it means on good science, the fact that it's not peer reviewed is going to be used to uh, to dismiss it. Dismiss it. So this paper is uh, a, a new take on somewhat old data. It says much the same thing that many people have been saying in slightly different form. There has been, as far as I've seen, not a peep in the mainstream media about it. Uh, I saw it. I don't remember how originally, but then I also saw it covered in Phil Harper's Substack. Uh, and this Robert is, Malone as well. Okay, Robert Malone also talked about it, and you know it's the it's the same as the usual suspects, you know, including us talking about these things over and over and over again. And one has to wonder what, why, what is going on. So, sort of simultaneous with with this this being out recently, we have uh, Zach. If you would show. The first, I'm going to ask you to show the three things that I sent to you. We've got first in Washington State. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can we go back and say a thing or two about this paper if we're going to move on? Well, this is all connected, but sure. Um, one thing I want to say is that inherent to what this paper presents is a conservatism about the conclusion, right? Really, the conclusion is already the cost of those vaccinations exceeds the benefit. The likelihood, so because they define serious adverse events, the likelihood that there is subclinical stuff that has been caused by these vaccinations, but that has not um, unfolded in a serious event yet, things that could be, that could remove decades from people's lives, mm -hmm. right? Those things are very likely to make the picture much, much worse the longer the time period over which you evaluate them. And so effectively, this paper is saying, Within a year, we have already reached a level of adverse events that exceeds any benefit we've seen. The chances that the benefit... Well, and actually, I think it was Pfizer who only tracked it for a month after 
one of one of them, I don't remember which one it was, I think it was Pfizer that actually didn't even track for the whole year. They just tracked for a, a month after the second dose of the vaccination, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, in any case, the point is, over a short period of time, the amount of harm done by the vaccines is already exceeding the benefit done. But because we know the benefit declines mm -hmm. and the harm, we don't know what it does long term, but the chances that it does serious harm and then none is very, very low. Yep. Um, so the point is the picture is likely to be much worse than they present. Absolutely. So your point, I, I didn't understand what you meant at first by conservative here. Um, it is important. It is important for scientists to uh, convey a conservative interpretation of their own results uh, so that even if they think they're seeing something extremely strong, uh, they stay within the, you know, the conservative bounds of what it might mean, which increases the chances that what they're saying is true, although it may, um, may well undersell, under describe what is actually true. And so there are at least, at least, I guess you've described maybe three ways um, that these results here are likely to be conservative. Uh, that uh, the benefits of the vaccines decline over time, the costs of the vaccines will increase over time, and, uh, and therefore a short time period of measurement uh, will uh, appear to make the benefits be higher than they actually are and also appear to underweigh the costs. And then you also have, what was the third one? I um, can't remember at the moment what the, what the third way that it was conservative. Um, well, it's conservative in multiple ways. I think one we didn't mention was uh, that were you to do an all-cause mortality over a very long period of time, you would catch lots of little harms that don't show up in particular adverse events. Yeah. And actually, that's related to the one I had in my head, which I think you did allude to before, which is that they have specified in order to be very careful, in order to make it maximally quantitative, uh, serious adverse events. And that means that anything that is not designated as serious or anything that is subclinical in any way, or indeed, again, this is related to the first points, um, anything that has a delayed uh, effect is unlikely to be captured here. Right. Yeah. And I will also point out that those of us in the heterodox scientific and, and medical community are very concerned about the degree to which the aggressiveness of this campaign and the focus on vaccinating everybody, irrespective of whether or not their particular jeopardy suggested it might be of value to them, has the collateral effect of making it very hard to figure out how much harm was done by the vaccines because it makes the control group that much uh, smaller and harder to identify, mm -hmm. right?